G'day Cobbs, the Path of Gloffery just came out, it's a new quest in Old School RuneScape. This is a quest that was ported from RS3, so most of the information is already on the wiki. This is just a day one guide to get you through the quest, because that's why you're here, you don't want to read the wiki, so I'm going to help you get through it. First of all, here's the requirements for the quest, I'm going to put them on the screen for you. And then next up is our required items, we're going to need a crossbow and a mithril grapple. A tree gnome village dungeon key, if you don't have this in the bank we can get it during the quest. Now let's get into the recommended gear. You want to bring a slayer home with your best combat gear. It doesn't matter what style, we just have to kill a couple of mobs that are quite weak. You also want to have access to spirit trees. That's why I'm bringing a grand seed pod. This really helps out for the quest, but it's not necessary. And you also want to bring a couple prayer potions and a couple stamina pots with some sharks or other food. And now that you're geared up, let's get into the quest. First, you want to make your way to the tree gnome village. The best way is by spirit tree. Talk to King Bolron and go through his dialogue and start the quest. Once you start the quest, you want to head down the Tree Gnome Village dungeon, over here. Once you enter the dungeon, you want to go west and talk to Golri. You want to ask him if he's found anything interesting recently, and then go through the rest of his dialogue. To make sure you don't have to repeat this step, I recommend just grabbing all the items possible from him, including the pebble, the amulet, the book, and the key. After you get all these, you want to read the book, and then make your way over to the east side of the dungeon. At the east side of the dungeon, there's going to be a little tunnel you can go through, which leads to a puzzle. This puzzle is pretty simple, you just want to push these out the way so you can get through this little maze, which you're going to see me do right now. Don't mind me looking around, it just took me a second to figure out what to do. There's four chests in this room that you want to search. Once you push the monoliths out of the way, you want to search all these chests and make sure you have enough inventory space to get all the items from them. You're going to receive another book and start receiving shapes. Once you push this last monolith out of the way, you can search the final chest getting a seed. You can sing that seed on the crystal bowl to make a crystal chime. Once you get your chime, you can reset the monoliths to go back to the start of the dungeon. Once at the start of the dungeon, we're going to make our way back through for a second time. We'll now have a key that we got from one of the chests we can use to unlock the, the door. We got to go over to this book and we got to go through each of the chapters by clicking on them. Each one will play its own individual cutscene, which I'm going to speed through. Once the cutscene is over, we can get onto the real fun part, this horrible machine. Now this thing's very simple but also very complicated. There's a load of information on the wiki but I'm going to try and explain it to you as best as I can. These puzzles are different for each individual player. So we're going to have to use the table on the wiki to figure it out. So we can see here that we have a indigo circle which equals 6 if we look at the table. And then we've also got an indigo triangle which is 18. So 6 plus 18 equals 24. 
We need to find a single shape that's worth 24. And that would be an indigo square. So we know we need an indigo square to solve that first puzzle. Now if we look at the second puzzle, for me, it's an indigo pentagon, which is 30. So we need to figure out two different shapes that equal 30. So you're going to have to use this machine to exchange your shapes for different value shapes. So you can select your shape and click it into the left side here. And then you can click the little arrow to see what it will go into. If the exchange matches what you need, you click the tick and it will be complete. This just takes a little bit of playing around. I suggest you keep this table open and work off it while exchanging your shapes. Now this is by far the hardest part of the quest. So keep cool and persist through it. Keep exchanging your shapes till you get the right ones. Then once you get your right shapes, you can place them in the machine. Once you insert the correct shapes into the machine, a cutscene will play. How's that meant to be evil? That guy's cute. After this cutscene plays, we're going to go back to the king at the spirit tree and kill his evil pet. While running back to the king, you can drop all your extra shapes because you no longer need them. Once you return to the king, kill his pet and then talk to him. After the dialogue finishes, talk to him again. Once you've spoken to him twice, use the spirit tree to teleport to the gnome stronghold. We're going to go up into the northwest corner of the first floor of the stronghold and talk to Gianni Jr. Say that you need their help finding a certain gnome. After the dialogue finishes, we're going to want to head to a fairy ring and use the code BKP. Once teleported, we want to run northwest and we'll find a tree where we can use a grapple on. On the other side, we'll find Long Ramble. We want to go through his dialogue. He's going to tell us to go talk to this old spirit tree. <laughs> this burger guy's got all the zingers. After going through the tree's dialogue, we can use the crystal chime on him. And that will rejuvenate him. Once we revive the tree, we want to go back and talk to Long Ramble.
Once done with Long Ramble's dialogue, we want to make our way to the sewer entrance. We're almost at the end of the quest, we just need to make our way all the way through this sewer to the end. It's handy to wear a Slayer Helm in here because you'll take less damage from the Terror Birds. After following that long path, we're going to reach this room with the crater in the middle. We're going to go to the east side and there's going to be a gate we can unlock. In here, we got to kill these three warped terror birds. These aren't very tough. And you shouldn't have a problem even with minimal gear. After we kill the terror birds, the cutscene's gonna play. What the hell? When <laughs> since when did terror birds have names and numbers? Like what? This is weird. They're like talking to each other. Oh shit! They're going nuts. And now there's farting bum holes in the wall. Okay. <laughs> Alright, Hazelmore's gonna save us. This hand that keeps flashing. Alright. And that should be it, we've finished the quest and we're going to get a bunch of XP lamps here. Giving us 30k strength XP, 20k slayer XP, 5k thieving and 5k magic. That's pretty good for a quick quest. That puzzle is a little annoying though, it's definitely the worst part. Anyways, that's the day one guide to the path of Gloffrey. Um, I know it wasn't too in depth or anything, but I know some people like to watch a quick guide instead of reading the wiki, so I hope this helped you out. Anyways, Cobbs, I hope this video helped you get the quest done. Um, if it did, leave a like and subscribe. Peace out.